Okay, I just got a thing that said it stopped charging, so I'm gonna try to plug it into a different outlet here. It looks like it's fine to me. That's not good. I get this question a lot. Do I need a high power wall charger or outlet at my house in order to have a Tesla or any electric vehicle really? Generally, I say yes to this, but I thought, why don't I give it a test and see what it's like to actually use nothing but a regular wall outlet at my house? Let's see what happened. Okay guys, it is day one. Typically, here's what I have. And that goes here. So here's where I'm at now, 272 miles. That is the exact 90 percentage or 90% charge. So the question and the challenge is, can you live, can you really, you know, driving to work every day, that kind of thing, just use a regular outlet, a regular 110 outlet instead of a high power wall charger or a NEMA 1450. So. That's what I'm gonna do. And I do have a commute now. I used to work from home, but now I drive downtown. Um, it's not super far, but I'll kind of document all that for you. And we'll recap at the end, all the data about it. Um, and here we go, day one. All right, guys, night one, going to plug in Tez, my Model 3, into just a regular outlet. One interesting challenge is that the plug, the charge port is on that side of the car but the cable is definitely not long enough to run. Now Tesla does sell long enough cable or longer cables, and you also could um, run an extension cord. So it's not that big a deal, but gotta reverse the car and all that before I get set up. Let's do that. Okay, plugged in, good to go. Um, it's definitely a different connector than the one I have on my um, older Model S, uh, but now let's check out what it's actually getting when I start charging. All right, well, um, it looks like it's gonna work, but it says, as you can see there, charge speed reduced, check for extension cord or bad utility wiring. I'm guessing that it's my uh, home that was built in the 1950s, but it still is getting enough to reach my 90% uh, charge, which is what you charge up to every day uh, within six hours and 40 minutes. And uh, it'll be about 11 or 12 hours before I need to get back in my car. So really I'm not worried about it. You will be. It's plenty of time. Maybe tomorrow what I'll do is I'll try the, uh, the other outlet inside the garage. Okay, I just got a thing that said it stopped charging, so I'm gonna try to plug it into a different outlet here. It looks like it's fine to me. That's not good. Okay, it says it's charging now. Looks like it's going. Hopefully it'll keep going. Okay, success, overnight charging. Um, we're back up to 90%. Just plugged into a little wall outlet, no big deal. And checking out the car. Uh, 
We're up to 275 miles. We got plus 22 miles overnight. If my commute was as short as it is, then that would be no problem. So far, so good. Okay, so I just spent most of the day out with Jack. We're playing at the park, doing all this stuff, and then I have to drive to get him to fall asleep for nap sometimes, but we used about 50 miles of range, and we're gonna go out later as well, but I'm thinking that because I only have the 110 outlet, I might plug in now just to get an hour or so while we're here. I know it won't be much, but I feel like what you need to do when you only have a regular 110 outlet is charge at every moment you can. So you get home from the grocery store, plug in, you know, you, you, you're you gonna be leaving in an hour, you plug in. You don't, you know, waste any time because it takes so long to charge. So I'm gonna go do that now. Okay, Monday, day four, I think. Uh, and we got basically a full charge, up to 275 miles of range now on the Model 3. And that was basically after yesterday, I uh, only went to the grocery store and uh, went to the park with my son. I didn't do a lot of driving, so it basically charged all day long. And you kind of need that, it looks like, because otherwise, if you drove 40, 50 miles per day, it doesn't appear like you'd be have enough daily charge to get back to where you needed to be. You know, eventually you'd have a day where you were just completely drained. But of course you could hit something like a supercharger or one of those more high powered public chargers. After basically a full day of charging yesterday, back in business. So after it was all said and done, after the past seven days where I used just that wall outlet, I can say it's doable. I think it's possible to make this happen depending on your commute and maybe a few other factors. Now, of course, you're gonna be much happier with one of those high power options, either the NEMA 1450 or the wall charger from Tesla. And there are many other options as well, but those are the ones they recommend. So in any event, those are gonna give you a really good result. You're really never gonna to have to worry about how long you have to charge or even when. I'll go even several days without plugging my Model 3 into the wall at all. But let's assume you don't have either of those options. Let's assume that you either can't install them, you just don't wanna spend the money or whatever the case may be, but you do have a regular wall outlet to plug in. I think this is doable, but you're also going to want to add in some of those public charging options or any other you know way that you can really get it. And looking at the data, you basically see that each day I would start out with almost a full charge, around 272, 275 miles of range, which is 90% on a Model 3. And then based on how much I drove, I ended up with around 250 or maybe 240. So there was one day and I drove about 50 miles that day, just out and about with my son, kind of having a fun day. And so in that case, I actually ended up all the way down at 209. Now, the following day, I didn't drive at all. And that was nice because I actually ended up charging for almost 19 hours straight off that little wall outlet. Now, had I not been able to do that, had I also needed to drive that day, I don't think I would have actually made up the range and then been able to continue on my journey. So you can see that overall, there's kind of a downward trend here as the normal work week came into play where I wasn't able to get fully back to my normal state of charge. So a couple days of full charge at 275, then 269, then 260, then 262. So I had some issues as you saw with the charging overnight where it kept getting interrupted. And just overall, if I had a longer commute and this was my only option, I don't think that it would be entirely sustainable forever just using the wall outlet but I could have used the free level two chargers at my gym, or there are other public options near where I go take my son to play at the park or near my house and even some near my office here in downtown. So if I was just using that regular wall outlet at home, it would give me you know, most of my commute back every single day. I would slowly kind of trickle it away. And then any time where I actually drive for a bigger stretch, you know, 50, 60 miles in a day, you can see that I practically would not be able to get get that back the following day and eventually just run out of juice. So there are many other options and ways to supplement your home charging. You don't necessarily have to install one of these high power options. So don't be too caught up on that before you get your car. Now, if you can do it, of course, it's gonna make life a lot easier, but it's not actually required. So don't worry about it if you can't do it. 
Also, there is the Tesla supercharger network. Now, where I live, there's only one supercharger as of right now, and it is completely packed because there are 3 million people that live here in this area and one supercharger and a ton of people owning Tesla. So it really sucks. And it's basically just not an option unless you're traveling or happen to work there and you can get it at an off time. So, you know, if you have a supercharger available, that's great. And in fact, they're quite a bit cheaper than any of the other options that I've researched, with the exception of your home charger being the cheapest one of them all. So I hope this helped you guys. If you like data and understanding the analytics and kind of the way that things work in the world of EVs and Tesla and renewable energy, consider subscribing. If this video helped you at all, please give it a like. And don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you guys back here next time.